Well, after the epic adventure with Newton and Chambers car carriers, I thought we'd have a go at something a lot easier. So let's have a look at this 21 ton coal wagon by Parkside Models, part of now part of the Pico group. Out of the packet, it's the same as all of this series of models. Uh, it's got metal wheels, brass bearings, and three, four or five uh, sprues. And a sheet of Model Master decals and the obligatory written instructions. Diagram 110 was the first batch that British Railways ordered in 1950 and there was one lot of 1,000, numbered B200,000 to B200,999. Riveted bodies, unfitted, oil axle boxes, two doors per side, no top flap with an end door. Uh, the numbers were suffixed originally with a K. That was for identification that it was 21 tonnes and subsequently coded MDO under tops. On with the build and the first thing I'm going to do is substitute the base, well the floor of the wagon, uh, the body, for a piece of 60 thou plastic card. I've had issues with them in the past and I think this is the easiest way for me to deal with it. I measured the distance between the, uh, the sole bars with the axles installed and then that measurement I cut another piece of plasticard to fit between the sole bars. This was to give the floor even more rigidity. Sometimes the brass bearings have a little nipple on the end and they won't sit in the bearing hubs uh, right flush. So I got the tweezers, pinned them to the desk and then just filed that little nipple off. If it still won't sit flush, which sometimes they don't, it's time to get your favourite 2mm drill out and just drill out the hole just a little bit. I use my finger as a guide behind it because you can tell when it's going through and you don't want it to go through the plastic or your finger. I don't know why I like wagons so much. I think the idea of towing them around the railway network was quite appealing in my younger years. I also like the variety and the commodities that they carry. So I just find it more interesting than coaches. Not that I like coaches as well, just like wagons more. Over the years I've acquired quite a few reference books dedicated to just wagons as well. And they seem to be more thumbed through than any other books that I've got. The most common of which I've just put in the top corner trying to obscure my unmanicured fingers, much to the annoyance of my sister-in-law. Still, with the ends and the sides now glued together, it was time to drop the floor in and I put it on a my flat surface which is my uh, brass bending tool because it's the flattest surface I've got. If the body's square and flat It'll make it a lot easier to get the uh, the sole bars and the wheels flat. There's that other piece that I cut out earlier. That's going to keep the sole bars at the, the correct spacing. I glued one side of one sole bar on and then offered the wheels up and then I bought another new tool from Brass Masters. And it's a wheel gauge to get them square at the right distances. I'll leave a link in the description for that one because it is a really nice new tool. Now that the wheels are square to the sole bars it's time to get them dead flat which means putting them back on your flat surface and looking for gaps under the wheels. And then it's time for the small details. First of all we'll put those little bits behind the side stanchions before turning our attention to the brake gear. Now there's two V's on each side there should be one on one side and two on the other so it's quite important to get this the right way round otherwise you'll have the body essentially the wrong way round so with the door the end door to the right that side is the one that you chop off that way you get the correct hand brake on the correct side brake gear will come into play 
in the next videos in this series. Essentially there's four different types of these vehicles and each one is quite different. So I'm going to do four different videos in this bit. However, not consecutively because the next one that's coming up in a, in a week or so is a Backman 25 modifications and detailing. So most, most of the components been attached now, which means it's going to be about the right weight. To determine how heavy I needed to make it, I got an Acura scale HUO wagon, weighed that, and then put this one on the thing, on the scales, to see how much weight I'd need to add, which ended up being a small strip of lead. And that fits in between the brake rigging assemblies. After the... <coughs> After, um, when I was doing this, making this video, I was also doing uh, another project on the sidelines as well, which was weathering uh, another set of HUO Acura scale hoppers, and that nearly went horribly wrong. So that video will be coming out in a couple, in, in a few days too. For couplings, I decided to go with the uh, Backman fixed one, which is three six. 026 the longer version i'd run out of the ones that fit in the nem pockets these are fixed yeah, they don't make a lot of difference on a short wagon i'd quite enjoyed the build on this one that was quite relaxing and of course when you get to the end it's then time for paint which is not relaxing for me at all it's always a bit of a struggle i thought i'd do a sort of polka dot version of paint on this one maybe not this was all of my acrylic based paints uh, rust tones and I just brush painted them on again uh, because I was going to do hairspray technique again the idea being that this is just an undercoat so you just paint it in the rust tones but it's all different tones so it's not one color <coughs> and because I know I'm going to be doing a couple of these wagons, I decided to make a mask for the insides, so I don't have to keep using masking tape. And that was constructed out of a few bits of plastic card that I had laying about, and it's quite a tight fit. Needs to be, because no paint's supposed to be able to get in there. Then it's a couple of coats of cheap hairspray. Once that's dry, it's then time to go over with your uh, model colour. I use... MIG Ammo Grey and I ask anybody that says oh that's the wrong colour well if you can tell the difference between two shades of grey that are very similar after it's supposedly been out in the weather and rusted for years and years and been covered in coal dust repeatedly then good luck I also wasn't worried about the overspray so I didn't bother uh, masking off the, the lower half of the chassis because this would bleed into the effect that I was going for. In close up it shows what a dodgy white line that is I've painted on the end as well. But it didn't matter because I knew I was going to be taking a lot of it off anyway with the stiff brush and water used to activate the hairspray underneath the, the grey paint. Decals were next. Well, the three that, that I put on. And then it was a clear coat to protect everything. The K suffix on the number, I painted that out as well because that's a little bit too early for my modelling era. I decided not to give this one a complete wash and just give it uh, just a light highlighting around the, the, the raised details just to bring uh, make it pop out just a little bit. I've struggled with the inside of cold wagons before so this time I decided to spray the insides of it metallic steel and then uh, give it a dark wash and then I went over it with two different coloured powders, weathering powders which is uh, metal slag and medium rust and the results I am very very pleased with this is probably the best coal wagon I have ever built ordinarily uh, you'd see a picture of it going into revenue earning service on the layout, but not this time. I'm going to wait until all of its brothers have been 
built and then we'll do one of those right at the end. But for now, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.